by the 1930s, it has a gentleman called Joseph Stalin in charge. Joseph Stalin is the um, leader of Russia. And in the 1930s, he has a task. He wants to bring Russia up to the modern times. He wants to move from the Stone Age to the modern age in the space of a generation, possibly 10 years. He wants to take it out of countries 100, 150 years. He needs to do it in 10 years. He is fearful that he'll be invaded again. He is fearful that Russia is behind, fatally weak. And so his communism is not just simply about freedom and equality and love and everything else. It is about doing what you're told. All right? And so he has a particular drive, a particular ambition. Given the fact that he's also a slightly paranoid, insane man, medically insane, we have the situation of him driving through his reforms at a huge human cost. All right? We have famines in Ukraine. We have the shooting and purges of other people. The purges. Purges is when you get rid of something. Right? You purge blood. You cut yourself, you get out the contaminated blood. You purge your stomach. Purge means to remove off. And so we have in the, the late 1930s a period known as the purges, where he turns upon his own people. Right? The Germans next door, planning to invade at some stage, happy watching this man self-destruct in his own country. So the question is, if there's natural justice inherent in communism, if it's meant to be about goodness for its citizens, why did 10 million Russians have to die in the name of communism in the 1930s? So your questions will look at Russian communism, which becomes perverted, perverted by Stalin's communism. Right? My personal argument is that the, the communism of the 1930s was not the true communism which had been planned by people like Lenin, Marx, Engels, etc. But this man, this monster, our good friend in the Second World War, I might add, this friend, this monster, perverts the thing to his own particular whims and causes. One could argue, of course, he does the right thing. Right? Um, they survive. They survive the Second World War. They come out of a stronger country. He takes them from being a basket case to becoming the, one of the twin superpowers of the 20th century. All, right? All in the space of his lifetime. And so one has to argue. Niccolo, Niccolo Machiavelli once spoke of the fact that uh, the end justifies the means. He wrote a book of the prince in the 15th century that sometimes you have to um, crack shells to make an omelet, break eggs to make it crack. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you have to do a bit of damage um, to get the job done. Okay? The human cost was 10 million. My argument was that that was an unnecessary human cost. Right? The man is wanting to industrialize the country, he wants to have machinery, he wants to have overseas machines coming in. What can he use to pay for these overseas machines? Wheat, food. So he exports food to buy machines. Exports food, that means taken from the peasants. So people are starving to death while they're exporting food. So look at the Irish situation in the 19th century when Ireland continued to sell food overseas throughout the famine. Right. So this one's an interesting one. You look at whether Stalin's communism was truly communism in the 1930s. Is it acceptable to um, kill some of your people for a greater good? We look at such things as, say, perhaps even deliberately. 